So here we are, here's another in our occasional series of videos about the music that we're going to be doing at the Cheltenham Coffee Concerts. I wanted to tell you about a piece that we're going to be doing on November the 4th. It's the first modern performance of William Hayes' Oratorio, The Fall of Jericho. It lasts about 50 minutes, but it hasn't been performed since its Oxford first performance in the mid-18th century. So, this video will tell you a little bit about William Hayes' background and a bit about his music. William Hayes was born in Gloucester in 1708 and spent his formative years in the cathedral choir under the then organist William Hine. Hine's most enduring achievement was helping to establish the annual meetings of the combined cathedral choirs of Gloucester, Worcester and Hereford. As a young boy, Hayes would have been involved in the first meetings of the Three Choirs Festival, which continues to this day. So here we are in the cloisters of Gloucester Cathedral. Now we've come here because William Hayes began his musical career as a chorister here, under the tutelage of William Hine. Now the cloisters are famous for the fan vaulting and being the set for Harry Potter. But also, they are the burial place of William Hines' mortal remains. And there's a tablet in the cloisters, which I think is the most significant little piece of history that the Gloucester Cathedral has to boast. And this is it, a unique document in the annals of Anglican church music. Hines Memorial records the high regard in which he was held, not least for his upright moral character. In recognition of his work, and quite unusually, the Dean and Chapter had voluntarily increased his stipend. Sadly, the memorial also records his early death at the age of 43 in 1730. Another testament to Hines' reputation is that in the year after he died, a collection of his church music was published in Gloucester by subscription. 
The Harmonia Sacra Glossestriensis, or Select Anthems, is not widely known today, but it reveals a composer who was capable of sensitive word setting and effective control of harmony, in a style clearly indebted to Purcell and Blow, as we heard in that short section from the anthem I Will Magnify Thee. We can get an impression of the extent of Heine's connections from the list of over 200 subscribers to the publication. He evidently had kept in contact with Magdalen College since four copies were ordered for the choir there. Another subscriber was William Hayes, who at the age of 22 was already organist of Worcester Cathedral. Not long after that, in 1734, Hayes moved to Oxford to the post of Informata Choristarum, in effect the Director of Music, at Magdalen College. It seems that Heinz's connections had posthumously helped his star pupil in getting the post. Seven years after that, in 1741, William Hayes was elected to the post of Professor of Music at Oxford University. As Professor of Music, Hayes was at the hub of an important provincial centre of music making in the 18th century. Unlike his mentor Hein, Hayes's music was thoroughly up to date and very clearly indebted to his hero George Frederick Handel, the Man Mountain as Hayes called him. One of the major achievements of his time in Oxford was the building of the Hollywell Music Room, which is still used as a concert venue. It was there that much of his music was performed, including concertos, trio sonatas, and numerous vocal works. He is also credited with having written the first English harpsichord concerto. <laughs> of his music remained in manuscript, and even today very little of it has been published. Only a handful of recordings have been made of his music. The Corelli Orchestra and I recorded a CD a few years ago of Hayes' music for the Hollywell Music Room, 
including the harpsichord concerto and two cantatas. On November the 4th, as part of Cheltenham Coffee Concerts, we are performing Hayes' Oratorio, The Fall of Jericho. This will be its first complete performance since the 18th century. Thank you. 